Gillian, thank you. Let's have a look at the newspapers for you this morning with theologian Vicky Beeching and comedian Andrew Ryan. Good to see you both again. Good, to you. Good morning. It's an interesting morning. morning, isn't it? An interesting mix of, uh, of stories on the front pages and inside pages. Kick off with the Sunday Times, Vicky, should we? Um, age of consent, drop it to 15, yeah, so says it's this a, group. Being proposed by Professor John Ashton, who's uh, the president of the Faculty of Public Health, so one of our leading experts in the UK on public health, he's saying that we're actually sending confusing messages to teenagers because uh, legally, obviously, they have to be 16, but actually a third of teens are having sex before 15. And uh, he's saying he thinks that we need to drop the age, in his own words, draw a line in the sand so people know this is the, this is the line, don't cross it. But, um, I thought there was a line in the sand already. That's exactly what I thought. I don't really understand. I don't think we're sending a confusing message at all. I think if we follow his logic, then if culture you know, leads law, basically the age is just going to slip lower and lower and lower because I think people will try and get away with what they can. So if it becomes 15, who's to say, you know, it'll just keep lowering over the years. But don't we have to stay uh, with a sense of reality with all of this? A lot of... of children under the age of 16 are having sex. They are. I just, I don't personally think that's a good thing. I think, you know, they're not old enough to vote, they're not old enough to drive, and yet uh, they are engaging in something that could result in them becoming parents. It's a very serious, weighty thing. I don't mean to sound prudish, but I think we need to understand the complexities of sex, that it has a real impact on people, and also the responsibility that, you know, if you are that young, you are engaging in something that could create a child. And I think we need to, to keep the line in the sand drawn uh, definitely at 16. I and also, think. I wonder whether uh, Professor John Ashton would be comfortable with a 17-year-old and a 15-year-old. In, in his, uh, on his suggestion, that mm. would be legal. Would he be as equally comfortable with that? It's very important to look at all those issues, isn't it? And I, I think the public re response to this is likely to be it's not a good idea. Well, well, so far, uh, the tweets are all saying no. Really? Yeah, oh, that's well, interesting. we'll keep yeah. your thoughts coming through on that at Sky Stephen, at Sky Gillian, or you can uh, email us news at sky.com. We would love to hear your views, hopefully, talking to the author of that report a little bit later on this morning. Let's look ahead to Christmas, though, Andrew, should yes. we? Yes. The scandal of Christmas payday loans. Um, the uh, vulnerable people at Christmas who are hired up for cash are being targeted with a very snazzy sort of campaigns uh, to get them to take out loans and being charged extortionate rates like 1,500% APR or 2,000%. Uh, I often feel sometimes this kind of really does annoy me is that if you have, if you've not got a lot of money this Christmas, to have a year off. Just take a year off. Maybe say to your family and friends that you're a little bit hard up this year. And I'm sure but if you just so say it to people, pressure, though, isn't exactly. There? That's there's what I'm saying. So much pressure. Don't be afraid to say it to mm. your family. Say, look, I'm stuck for money this year. I don't want to get a payday loan. It'll give you a very good festive period, but it'll darken the rest of the year because I've got to pay extortionate rates. Mm. If you just say, I'm going to take this year off. I'm going to spend very little amount of money this year. I'm sure your family are not going to turn around and go, oh, that's not good enough. You know, mm. we're going to say, OK, well, fair enough. But you is know. it all the children it, would, though? Is it, I mean, that's a lot of it is, <laughs> is, is yeah. Um, yeah, well, to power. I think it's important yeah, it's to ask good. for help as well. You know, a lot of people just think that with Christmas, everyone has to have a... You know, it's, in my family, we used to have to spend a minimum amount on each person. You know, if you can just make some, certain changes like that and say, look, instead of buying seven or eight presents for the children or whatever, might only buy three or four, mm. or maybe just reduce it a little bit, you know, because the pressure is getting ridiculous yeah, it is on. Now. There were some interesting stats, actually, in another story that were saying that spending's actually up from last year per gift, kind yeah. of on average. And I think bearing in mind the austerity that we're mm. living in, it does prove, doesn't it, that uh, we're, we're clearly overstretching ourselves. Mm. And I think it's the marketing. I think we're mm. so pressured, especially, like you say, with kids and all the technological gadgets mm. that are out. Expectations are just too high. I, I think, think it's a shame that Christmas is every year seems to be increasingly about gifts rather than about... Yeah, commercialism. Even if, even if you're not religious, just you know, having a nice family. I always think of it just as a family time. Mm. You don't want to just be with the family. Yeah. It doesn't have to be about spending loads of dosh. Mm. No, it isn't all, but... At least that's, that's my excuse. <laughs> my, my lot aren't getting much this year. Yeah. If you need a loan, though, I'll help you out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. It's all about just... just Lots of family love and things. It should be, shouldn't it? it? And I, think, I think, yeah. So. If it's not about that, if it's about presents, I think this Something just a really wrong, sad reality. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, the Sunday Mail on Sunday, uh, Vicky. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Muslim Veil. Very interesting piece. I don't know if um, you guys caught the documentary about the Quilliam Foundation and the EDL yes. leader Tommy Robinson. Yeah. But uh, this is written by uh, Majid Nawaz, who's actually the. Um, head of the Quilliam Foundation, and he's suggesting, obviously, the, the Muslim veil is very controversial at the moment, um, the niqab being the face covering, the burqa being the full body covering, and, and he's saying he thinks that um, the, the, the guide in this should be identity-sensitive situations. So he's saying if you're in a situation where you couldn't wear a balaclava or a motorcycle helmet, 
that's the kind of situation where covering the face should not be appropriate. So he's talking about airports, courts, schools, hospitals. And uh, he's saying that, yes, religious freedom is one thing, but actually, when it comes to security, like you know, giving a child to a parent at the school gate, you should actually be able to know who that person is. Sounds like just a very sensible, yeah. common-sense approach. It does, it does. I mean, from a like, religious perspective, I really think we need to, to respect people's right to wear their, their coverings if they want to. I know many Muslim women who actually choose to, to wear either the niqab or the burqa out of their own volition, they want to wear it, and I think that should be allowed. But this, this to me, is the first piece I've seen that feels sensible in, in talking about any kind of restrictions, because mm. I think when you do get to situations of, of security and identity, there has to be some sort of responsibility, doesn't there? Yeah. And the thing to remember as well, it's not an absolute requirement of Islam to wear them. No, it's up. not. It's and not. It's an no. option that some people take. So totally. um, to use that as a defence to mm. always wear it, I think, is, is yeah. And a bit... like with the guy escaping from the mosque recently, mm. I mean, there's there's just different things that are beginning to highlight to us the need to maybe have some responsible rules as well mm. as respecting religious freedom. Mm. Um, do you know what I'd like to do, Andrew? Is I'd like to sit down and watch you call. We'll call your bank to make a complaint. Yeah. As the penny drops, it's costing you a fortune to do it. Oh yes, I'm always on the phone to my bank. But, <laughs> but the, ba <laughs> the banks have had to make a U-turn because of the uh, ring up making the 0845 numbers, all these premium phone calls and stuff like that. I feel like sometimes I have to take out a Christmas payday loan just to pay for the premium <laughs> phone lines. But. They have to, because like sometimes when you ring up, you're on hold for like three or four mm. minutes. You get an automated voice message, option one, option two, option three. But it's like you know, to you know they're dragging it out, don't yeah. you? Yeah. You're four minutes in, and then you're very close to speak to someone, but you're two quid down. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like going, I don't want to hang up now because I've come so far. <laughs> I remember once the bank made a mistake with one of my with my credit card, and I had to ring them. They then apologised, and I said, "Well, are you going to refund me the price of the call because you've made the mistake?" They were like, "No, no." You can't do that. That's so, so but unfair. you made a mistake, so I'm yeah. now down You're money and it. time for your mistake. So there should, you know, so there have been a lot of pressure put on them to go back to free phone numbers and stuff. So I think it's only a good thing. I think slowly they're kind of realising that these sort of customer service gripes are really getting to annoy yeah. people and they're starting to change their ways a bit, yeah. which can only be good. We do feel that like we're just getting squeezed, don't it's we? Constantly, sort of thing. Yeah. 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 I yeah. think social media helps too. People can moan more easily and yeah. be listened to. So. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people complaining about those kind of numbers. It is, yeah. it is quite good, actually, on the old Twitter. If you do want to complain about a phone company or a <laughs> bank or a I did whatever last week, it is. actually. <laughs> yeah, they, but you yeah. do get a response. Yeah, yeah. And they get back to you very yeah. quickly yeah. Yes. as well, because they have social media teams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. suddenly they're like, quite, Suddenly they're like, yeah. Quite, I've, I've actually said nice things about trains that I use sometimes. And again, it's quite nice to be able to say something positive when it goes well. Because yeah, I'm yeah. that sort of person. Um, what a nice man you see. are. Well, <laughs> can we have a look at magic pants? This is unbelievable. Uh, do we have to? So, Asda <laughs> have just launched uh, their pants with buttock pads. They are available for only six pounds, and uh, they're selling it, saying every woman can now boast it behind, like Kim Kardashian. Well, uh, uh, yes. Well, that's yes. That's a. Re I'm just being told by my producer that I need to explain that is a, someone's <laughs> real bottom. <laughs> <laughs> one of the classic things, um, apparently one of their the strap time. lines is... Um, this I is a fake bottom, ladies and gentlemen. Where's the fake? This one. Oh. <laughs> and that's, saying, uh, this um, is someone's saggy before bottom. No, yes. Mean, <laughs> So it's basically like I'm a, a serious bra. journalist, you know. But, you know, I just think it's <laughs> it's so sad that people are, are so unhappy with their bodies that they now have to buy this. I mean, they're basically saying um, it's very difficult to tell. Their strap line is, I can't well, believe it's the, not buttocks. <laughs> so I think it's great. I can't uh, believe it's not buttocks. But I just don't think these are necessary. I don't the think is, they should. Whoever be... you're trying to impress with these added pads, they're going to find out the real story exactly. in the end, aren't and they? And you can double stuff them, apparently, according. You, know, <laughs> if you want to go that extra mile. But I just think women should be able to accept the way they are, and you shouldn't need, you know, Asda pants to do that. <laughs> and the fact that they're six pounds to me means that they're going to just sell, like, anything. And I don't know, I just think we're we going to be sell, like, hot cross in bombs. our own skin. Very good, very good. Are you ever about doing stand-up comedy? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, we're, but, we're, we'll be going to buy some double stuff pants a little bit later, Andrew, yeah. won't we? I can say. can't afford it, mate. It's Christmas. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ring Asda, but the phone going. No, it yeah. yeah. cost you too much. More no. than six pounds. Look, we're going to take a short break, I think, <laughs> just to give me a chance to recover. Back with more papers in just a moment. <laughs> So we're looking through the papers with uh, Andrew and with Vicky. I'm busy scanning through because I'm trying to find the Sunday Express. Public toilets, Andrew. Yes. No more public loos. Public conveniences, as they always were. Oh, have you ever had this problem where you're walking through High Street and you've got to go to the toilet? Yeah. And uh, there's no public, public loos. I mean, sometimes you can pay 30p to go into the train station and stuff like that. But you have to sometimes have to go into a pub 
you know, to, to run that gauntlet mm -hmm. where you like see it. a sign that says Cust toilets Customers. for customers use only. Mm -hmm. The councils are cutting back on public loos so, um, because they're trying to save a little bit more money. Um, it's also putting a hampering, sort of, if you're saying it, it's turning people off going down the high street because they can't go to the toilet. And uh, I've done this many times where I've ran in and trying to like dodge the barman or the barmaid and gone to the toilet and run out and felt really guilty about it. You know, I've even gone in once and said, can I have a Diet Coke? Bought oh. a Diet Coke and then gone to use the toilet. I've done that. But have you ever gone in and said, do you mind if I use the toilet? And they've gone, no, you can't, unless you're a customer. Oh, no, I've not yeah. even tried Some of them have got locks on them now, I've yeah. noticed. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, you've got to have a key. If you go to certain coffee sh shops yeah. and stuff like that, you've got to go yeah. to the toilet with a key. Oh, you don't want to go and ask it. But I don't like those electric ones. You know, they're, they're the, the, the public toilets, where, like the cubicles. Those are quite frightening, aren't they? They are, because and they especially open when, you, after when, a certain amount when time, you come they? out, someone tries to walk straight in before it's all flushed itself and things. <laughs> oh, that's not I'm always worried I'll get well. locked in there and never be seen again. It's, oh. I'll just be like banging on the door of a plastic. It's mortifying. Plastic. Yeah. Plus, if you've, got it's mortifying. Your, if you've got your Asda padded pants on, you know, it takes well, you a while to get them off. You know, right. Can you even get out of them? Really, you know, just who knows what you look like when you come back out? You come on the wrong way around, you're finished. We're out of time. Well, you'll be pleased to know you're both back in an hour. <laughs> well, it is like just like a major stand-up routine this morning. Good to see you. Uh, let's get a quick check on the sports headlines. What have you got, Charlie?